Hello, my name is Anne Vivian. Welcome to Mystical Adventures. Thank you so much for joining me. We are going to explore a message from Kuan Yin and the hermetic principle of rhythm and ebb and flow today. Are you enjoying your Mercury retrograde? I am swimming through a bit of a brain, well, it's a temporary fog and it's going to transform, I affirm it though, into insight and rejuvenation. But here we are in Mercury retrograde. It's a great time to do anything with the prefix of re, rethink, redo, reorganize, reassess. And I always like to look at the positives of the planet of communication, travel and technology, feeling the backward movement of this planet. And so I'm doing some reassessing and reflecting. So let's get to the spirit helper message for this week. I want to, if I have time to pull some cards for the energy of the week, I will, but there is a message that I wanted to share with you from Kuan Yin, who is the Ascended Master Spirit Helper of the Week. And I also wanted to talk a little bit about the principle that she brings up, which is written about in and explained in the Kabbalion, the Hermetic text. And if you recall, I channeled a message from a plant spirit oak tree plant spirit for the entire month of September and the oak tree beautiful spirit um, plant spirit consciousness talked to us about becoming more aware of those around you and it was using the metaphor of its branches and becoming aware of all the life that it hosted in its branches and ascending and raising your consciousness as a way to attract high vibrational flocks of people and friends and lovers and those close to you. So we have been exploring that in the previous shows. Last show, we had a beautiful message from the cat bird spirit animal. And the cat bird was giving us some advice about being aware of our communication and the people around us and how they communicate and how that can help us tweak and improve our communication. And so this is a continuation this week of this message. We are looking at a continuation of understanding, being more attuned to those around us and improving our relationships, the way we express compassion. The Ascended Master Kuan Yin came to me in my meditation today for the Spirit Helper of the Week. And every week I open myself to higher expanded consciousness. It could be a plant, animal, spirit. It could be an ascended master, angel, star being. And this week it is an ascended master. And when I say ascended master, what I mean in this instance is Kuan Yin is considered a bodhisattva, which means she is an enlightened being. She could have moved on to the other realms, but she came back as an ascended master, bodhisattva, to help us, help humanity. And her specialty is compassion, self-compassion, mercy, She's often seen holding a lotus flower. She's associated with this divine feminine energy. She's often seen holding a vase of water. She's associated with the ocean, the water, the flowing water, the element of water. I'm going to read for you the message I channeled right before the show from Kuan Yin. And this is the message to help us navigate the energies of this week, September 28th, 2021. You may notice that Issues, situations, energy having to do with compassion, self-compassion, mercy comes up. And also the subject matter that she will talk about in this message. So pay attention, I suggest, to what she's talking about, not only for today, but for this week. A message from Kuan Yin. Peace. Serenity. There are many paths to peace. You are on the path to peace as you know your heart. You are on the path to peace as you understand you are not alone. And there are many levels of beings who love you and offer support to you at this time. 
Imagine a many leveled mansion around you with hundreds of floors. This is a taste of the layers of multiple levels of beings who surround you with their compassionate gaze and ready heart, poised to bestow you, my beloved, with their love, wisdom, and help. Swim in the ocean of forgiveness and refresh your soul. The compassion you feel is the compassion of your creator. Allow the compassion that, that has been handed to you to spill over into your soul and weave back again into the waters of this life as currents of the ever-present love that forever flows. It may feel that the ebb and flow are cruel, but you are one with the ebb and flow. You are the water itself, and there is never a lack in your true essence. You are the embodiment of the everlasting divine love and life. Those around you may struggle, and you may feel you're not enough or that you do not have enough to help them. Understand the ebb and flow in relationships and your life. You may want to alter this expansion and contraction, but as you yield to the natural flow and feel the truth that there is an eternal source of waters of life, of the waters of life, it allows the flow of energy in your relationships to open up. You are able to draw on the source of the ever-flowing compassion that sends divine currents of love through you and ripples out to all you meet. Be calm and still at this time. Allow the waters of divinity to soothe your soul. Serenity comes from understanding the ebb and the flow. It comes from acceptance of the structure of the universe and your soul. You're able to move through the ebb and flow and see your own stability and eternal nature. This is the truth of the many-leveled mansion. It is many-leveled, and yet we are all one. At this time, see the unity of all the levels and allow yourself to feel the oneness of all creation around you. Allow yourself to recognize and embrace the ebb and the flow of life as two, experience, two experiences of the same eternal being. The ebb and the flow are two experiences of the same eternal being. And I'm having the eternal experience of having a piece of nut stuck in my teeth that I ate right before I went on air, which was probably not my wisest choice of snack times. So thank you for having compassion for me as I deal with this piece of nut. But this is live on the air, people. The show must go on. So, Kuan Yin, I want to thank you for bestowing us with that beautiful message. And I want to ask you, my beloved tuning in, are you aware of the ebb and flow in your life? Are you aware how for you, for others, there's ups and downs, there's abundance, there's lack, there's ecstasy and agony and this is part of the experience of being human is there's an ebb and flow in the Kabbalion, they write about this phenomenon as well this is an ancient hermetic text and it talks about different universal principles so i want to read from you from chapter 11 rhythm from the Kabbalion. everything flows out and in Everything has tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. In this chapter, the wise keepers of the hermetic tradition who bestow us with their wisdom describe in more detail uh, about this principle of rhythm, this principle of ebb and flow, and discuss how you see this in all of creation. You see this in human anatomy, human nature, human emotions. You see it in nature and animals, in governments, philosophies, 
the creative process, the mental process, you see there is an expansion and contraction, a swing of the pendulum that happens all throughout the universe. And this is part of the creative process. This is part of, this is a universal law. We cannot escape, but we can learn how to work with it and how to be masters of it. So I think it's so fascinating to think about the ebb and flow and in our lives and the parts of it that are out of our control that we can learn to accept, but also the parts of it that we can learn to work with and flow with. I wanted to quote the Kabbalion today in this chapter because that's what Kuan Yin was talking about, helping to understand that in our relationships, helping us to understand as we try and be compassionate with people that there's an ebb and flow in our loved one's lives. There's an ebb and flow in our lives. And as you can see that bigger picture, you know, she's asking us to look at the bigger picture of the mansion. There's this mansion of infinite levels of loving beings who are connected with us in the cosmos. And we are all one. And there's an infinite amount of ebbs and flows in our life, in our multi-life experience, all of our reincarnations. And as we can back up and look at the big picture, Kuan Yin is guiding us and see that there's an eternal water, that eternal ocean that we are expressing here that is beyond just whether it's ebbing or flowing. If the tide is full or the tide is low, if the waves are coming out or they're, or they're pulling in, the water is high, the water is low, things are happy, things are sad, things are hard, things are easy. Um, there's an eternal consciousness behind it all. And she's pointing out to be aware of that as we're compassionate with ourselves, as we're compassionate with others, that as we can see that for our loved ones and see, they're actually connected as well with this multi-leveled mansion of help, support, love, compassion, divine support and compassion. They're connected with the eternal waters of spirit and as am I, and as I see my loved one or whoever you're dealing with in whatever relationship, your coworker, your, your customer, your fiance, your grandmother, whoever it is you're dealing with, if they are struggling, you want to be compassionate, see the truth for them. See that they are connected with that eternal water, even if things are, are ebbing and not flowing right now for them. And, you know, you could say the same thing for our nation, our world as we're dealing with still the pandemic, see the world as, as an expression of that divine, eternal flowing water. And beyond this one chapter in humanity in the universe, we are connected with that. And the Kabbalion is, is also encouraging you to take a step back and see the big picture. Don't get too wrapped up in the ups and downs. And the Kabbalion in this chapter actually talks in, in detail about emotion. And one way to deal with, everybody deals with difficult emotions. It's usually like a pendulum, the Kabbalion says. Although I think it might be more complex than the initial metaphor. But the Kabbalion is talking about everyone experiences sadness and, and happiness. And you can look at them as kind of related, the pendulum swings. But the Kabbalion is guiding us, this hermetic teaching is guiding us to transcend that, the details of the ebb and the details of the, the flow. Don't anchor your focal consciousness, your focal point in the ebb. Take a step back and see there's an ebb and a flow. And there are cycles as part of this universal principle. And as I can recognize, you know what? I'm just in one part of the cycle. And actually, I don't have to put all of my consciousness in focusing on this ebb right now. I can be present with it, but I can also shift my consciousness. I can also shift my consciousness to the whole and realize there is a huge mansion of love support and, and divine presence around me. There is an eternal water that flows through me. And I always have access to this eternal 
source. And as you do that, you're transcending that linear space time, lower dimensional reality and expanding, ascending to a higher dimensional understanding of reality, level of consciousness, and understanding that time is temporary. This moment is temporary and yet eternal. So the eternal part of time is not the linear part of time. And understanding that the ebb and the flow are temporary helps you to accept, appreciate, transcend, and to be able to find the joy even in the sadness, to be able to experience the divine love even in moments of temporary loneliness. And to also have compassion for yourself like Kuan Yin encourages us. We are human and we, we aren't perfect and we're learning and we have these experiences and it's normal to have experience, experiences of the ebb as part of the human experience as part of a universal principle that is experienced by all in the universe. But how you work with that ebb and flow, how you respond to it, how you engage or not with that energy is everything. That's your experience. You don't have to be a victim to it. You can, as Kuan Yin said, yield to the flow and you transcend these lower levels of understanding it and being a victim of it to a higher level of being one with it and connected to that divine help and support. So show your friends compassion by recognizing their divine support and abundance as, as you also take actions um, towards, towards helping people and being compassionate. Be compassionate for yourself. See the eternal abundance love support that's available for yourself as well this week, my friend. It is now the delightful, fun part in the show where we take a live caller. And I believe we have Kelly on the line from the UK. Hi, Kelly. Can you Hello. hear me? Yes. Hi, you're from Scotland. Yes. Welcome, my Scottish friend. Thank you so much for calling. This is Anne Vivian talking. Hi. How may I help you today? Um, I'm looking to see what like, my personal future looks like for the next year or so. Your personal you're looking to yeah, see what like your what personal, I didn't catch the rest life. of that. Like, just to see what, like, what. Your personal life. In store Got for it. the next, yeah, for the next, like, for my future. You are looking to see what your personal life specifically looks like in the future. Well, I love your accent, Kelly. What a beautiful Scottish accent. It is not often Thank that you. I run into a, a lovely Scottish persons that is such as yourself here in the state so kelly i think i feel my understanding is the moment of power is the present moment so i like to focus on your present moment and how that affects your future does that make sense yes so i'm going to tune into your energy before i pull a few cards and i'm going to tell you what i'm picking up on and then i'll pull a few cards and we'll look at how your current energy is affecting your future personal life Shall we? Yes, please. All right. So it's just going to be a few moments of silence as I tune into your energy. If you could just focus on opening your energy so I could read you, that would be really helpful. Kelly, as I tune into your energy, I get this symbol of a purse, and I feel like you've been saving up money, you've been saving up resources for something. I see, 
I get the sense that you have these visions in your head and you have a desire to bring those visions into reality very much and create what you're imagining in your head. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I, I sensing your energy, Kelly, um, I feel, I feel you have a very wise energy and you're, you're very quick to help people. And, um, I feel you are, what's the word I'm looking for in your energy? You're very caring. You don't care as much what people think. And I feel like you do have the ability to forge ahead, even when you're getting some disapproval from others. And these are beautiful strengths in your energy. So right now, I think one of one of the strengths is that you are clarifying what you want. You are clarifying your dreams and visions and goals. And you're clarifying the resources that you need to move forward. Um, so I'm just going to pull some cards and let you know what I'm seeing moving forward for you and how this energy is affecting your future personal life, as you asked about. Okay, so your energy right now, I feel like, you know, you're in a really strong place. I, I feel intuitively like you're you're ready to take a stand. You're ready to, you know, make a bold move. You're not exactly sure what move you want to make, but you're trying to formulate your plan for how you will enact some of the visions that you would like to create on this earth. And I feel like you are in a little bit of a holding pattern. You're, you're, um, you're not taking action right now, in other words. And there's a little bit of hesitation. Um, and there's a, a bit of an inner tension that I'm sensing in you that you, you'd like to take some action, but you also feel somewhat, um, in some ways, frozen. In some ways, like you're not prepared. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So anytime we have an inner dichotomy like that, it, it is our opportunity to create more of our goals and dreams and visions by turning towards that inner conflict. You know, we're talking today about rhythm, the ebb and, ebb and flow, and it's very similar to the idea of polarity. And so you have a polarity in your energy field right now, Kelly, which is not a bad thing. It, it happens to us all, as I was talking about today. So one of the things that could be really helpful, it's your challenge right now, which means it's an opportunity for you to overcome and to use as a doorway for manifesting what you want, is to turn towards the loneliness, turn towards um, your feeling a little bit caged or trapped, turn towards you're not sure what step to take, and begin working with these parts of you. You might want to work with a healer, with um, a spiritual counselor or a coach. You might want to have some some support for getting in touch with these parts of you. But as you can turn towards these parts and work with some of these underlying beliefs about um, I'm, there's a future for me, but I'm not sure what it is. And you want to transform that, Kelly, to there's a future for me and I'm clarifying what steps I can take now to manifest that. I'm getting clarification about right now what I need to do to manifest the relationships that I want to manifest and manifest the, the healings in my interpersonal life that I want to manifest. I feel, you know, there's that feeling, there's a part of you that's not afraid to take a risk. That's not afraid to make a change. That's not afraid to, you know, take a step. And it's really, you know, being able to work with the other part of you that is hesitant. But I see, you know, in your personal life, um, you're not really able to put yourself out there like you want lately. And that's, that's something that will really help you in the future as you shift some of this um, inner conflict. Does that make sense? Yeah. In what way can you imagine, what baby step can you imagine kind of putting yourself out there a little, Kelly, and taking that step toward cultivating more meaningful connections? 
um, maybe like socializing more. Yeah. Yeah. What would be like a baby step to socializing more? Um, going out probably more. Yeah. What do you like um, to do? What What are you curious about? Maybe where you'd meet like minded people. Um, I'm not really sure at the minute. I just thought it always busy with college or work or kids. Yeah, so you need to have some fun, right? It's all work and no play. So it might be, yeah. where can I take a little break? And that can also open up your energy field as well because it helps you to align your energy field with the vibration of joy and love. And, you know, you're always more attractive when you're relaxed, you're joyful, you're inspired. And so if you can incorporate more social engagement, more little activities that you can do that involve um, things that bring you a little bit, you know, even just something small, bring the kids. Um, you are going to help align yourself with that. We're, we're coming to the last minute of the show, but you know, I pulled the queen of pentacles for you, Kelly, as the final result. And that is a card of abundance and security and manifesting what you want. And I do believe that you have the power to do this. And I feel like as you show yourself that self-compassion, reach out more for support and also turn inwards and work with the, those inner parts that are coming up. You will manifest what you want in your personal life. Definitely. So I so hope, hope that was helpful, Kelly. Thank you very much. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. Bye. Week. Bye. And I want to thank you for tuning in, my dear. And I hope you have a beautiful, blessed week. And remember to shower yourself with that self-compassion. Tune into the divine rivers of love and compassion as you connect with others and i will look forward to seeing you next show blessings